A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. <coughs> video. Now I'm teaching 8th grade once again and during 8th grade we always talk about circus, circus theorems, Papa Thales, Papa Pythagoras, late in the game and so on. And once we are done we usually uh, write an exam. And this exam there's always one certain exercise that I put in there. Um, it's like a combined knowledge exercise when it comes to circus and a bit of elementary geometry. And it's very simple, it just states draw attention to a circle. We remember attention is just a thing that touches the arc of a circle at one point, meaning it's a 90 degrees to the radius. And there are smart as students who just say, yeah, I'm going to draw a circle on paper, then I can see where I pinched in my needle, and then I can draw a radius and just use my good old geodreieck, that's the right triangle thing that you can use to, to draw shit in a, in a right angle. And then I can roughly draw a tangent. Go fuck yourself, you're not going to do it like this. Because problem is they have a circle given and this circle doesn't have a center yet not one you can see obviously it has a center it's a circle but it is just not visible so this makes matters a bit harder and I want you guys to remember construction means with straight edge and compass a straight edge is a thing with no units attached to it it's, it's not like this good old Zollstock that you see here which has one two three four five and so on written on it it's not the case straight edge is just straight piece of aluminum or something I don't I don't really care what it's made of with no measure on it at all it's a unit length long or something and this makes matters way harder because usually students don't understand that back in the days they didn't have unit systems and the like, not, not good ones that everyone was using. They just had something like, let's use American units, a free cheeseburger long straight edge. Those were their regular units and this is what they just had to make use of and other people had to understand it too. And yeah, this is the exercise and it's actually quite interesting. Um, it involves a, a lot of elementary geometry um, that you might or might not have heard of yet. So try it out for yourself and then keep watching for the solution. I hope you are going to enjoy the video. Let's dive right in. So yeah, we have a circle given and first problem is we don't have a center. So let us find a center. But how do you find the center of the circle? It's actually rather easy using so-called chords of a circle. Remember a chord is just two points on the arc of a circle, the line which connects these two. So let's draw a chord in, um, just on a sketch because I want to prove it to you. Very elementary. This right here is a chord. Now, we are going to put a bisector, a perpendicular bisector onto this chord. A bisector bisects the thing in two equal lengths. So, for example, if you have a ruler which has units on it, you can measure it and then you can basically get yourself half of this line. And now you could use a geodreieck for, for example and just draw a 90 degree angled line perpendicular to the chord downwards. And what I'm claiming is that somewhere on this line the center is located. For example here, center of the circle. But how do I know that this is the case? Well. Let us connect the center, which is somewhere, with the chord points on the arc of a circle. Now the cool thing about the center is that a line from the center to the outer arc of the circle is the radius. Those are both radii. This right here is a 90 degree angle. This right here overall is an isosceles triangle, meaning this right here is alpha and this right here is also alpha. Meaning this right here must be beta and this right here must also be beta. Meaning, the thing is that is going to happen if I were to draw a bisector, line bisector, through this chord. It's going to bisect, obviously, this thing into half and if it runs downwards we are always going to meet at the center because the center is going to give ourselves those radii right here. That's very easy proof about this whole construction. Now what happens if I get myself two chords? Well, then by the same argument, we are once again going to put a bisector on here. It's going to run 
through our center of the circle and if two lines meet then that right here is a point and if they meet at the same point it's going to be the center in our case. And this is a simple theorem that you can prove in various different ways but it's very powerful to get yourself the center. This is the first step. But we can not measure, we need to get a, more, a bit more creative than that. So we need to find ourselves a bisector which is perpendicular to our chord in elementary ways using just straight edge and compass. Let us put a chord into here at first. Um, I'm going to put it like this. Also those chords must not be parallel to one another otherwise you can't re read out a point. Um, this right here is a chord. And how do you get yourself half of this line? And also, how is this bisector actually in 90 degrees to our line? Well, this is very easy. This is one of the easiest theorems, namely, to get yourself a bisector having the side. We are just going to take ourselves the compass, which is this thing right here. We are going to uh, make its legs spread, mm, I, I love legs, longer than half of the length of this line and we need to fix it in place meaning I'm going to take now my trusty magnets and I'm going to fix the length of my compass in place just like this. Now I can start drawing. Okay it's longer than half of my line. This is the first one and this is the second one. Now I'm going to put it over here and et voila if I actually get them to meet, then this should in theory half our line in a 90 degree fashion. And if we repeat this process once again, we are actually already done with finding ourselves the center. This is something that you can very easily prove in elementary geometry. It's one of the first things that you are ever going to prove there. And it already looks like a 90 degree angle, right? Um, I'm trying my best to be as accurate as possible. Now once again, what we're going to do is we're going to put another cord in here. I'm very sorry for the ghost blackboard. I can't do anything about it, literally. I have no idea what's going on. Gravity is just not my friend here in Saxony-Anhalt. Okay, this right here is another cord. And I'm actually going to use the measurement once again that I did before. It's going to be longer than half of my cord. Gotta put it on here. And now we can go ahead and get started with drawing it out. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, now I did an oopsie. My chug was twisted a tiny little bit. And another one. DJ Khaled speaking. Okay, nice. Now we are done. That was actually fairly easy giving ourselves the center. And if you want to see if it's actually the center, what you can do is you can just start measuring the radii and see if they are actually equal. Okay, perfect. This right here is our center, trying to make it as accurate as possible. And now let me measure a tiny little bit at two points or something. Those are 44 centimeters here and 44 centimeters here, exactly. Let us try here to the outer arc. That's 44 centimeters. Actually pretty good, actually pretty good. I'm surprised that it worked out this nicely. On paper, it's actually easier. You can follow along and try it out for yourself. Now we find our, we have found ourselves the center, meaning what we can do is we can now get ourselves a radius. Um, and this is where we need to get creative once again. Now we got ourselves a radius and don't forget, we want a line which is perpendicular to our radius and it's only touching the outer arc of the circle at one point. Now students usually just do this uh, roughly and they end up with something which is actually a secant like this. Okay, it's pretty hard to do. So how can you do it in a constructive manner with straight edge and compass? Now remember what we did here. We bisect the line perfectly right in the middle and it was 90 degrees then our bisector to our original line. Meaning if we could kind of bisect this line in two, we would get ourselves a right angle, but it would lie here, this line. So how can you get a bit more creative and actually get yourself this line over here? Well, if we could just double this radius and then take our measurements to the outside from this point to this point here and then use the same thing that we did here, then we would get a perfect 
half of this radius, which is lying exactly on the circle, which is going to be our tangent. Can you duplicate a side length? Yes, obviously you can. We have found our points out using just a simple geometry that we did. And to double the side length of something, all we really have to do is take our compass and just stitch it into here. And I'm trying my best to do so. It's rather hard with the magnets. I'm sorry for that. Oh no, I, I've done goofed once again. <laughs> it's actually not that easy. Okay, so we got our radius here. And now we can start duplicating our radius to the other side. And this is where our line is actually going to end over here. And now we can start connecting our center once again with this line. Just extending our radius a tiny little bit. Well, that was also fairly easy. So we have doubled our side length. This is something that you can do in elementary geometry. This is two times the radius. And if we now were to construct ourselves a bisector, obviously two times the radius. The middle is going to be just one radius length. And it's going to be 90 degrees to our two times radius line. Let's do this real quick. And then we are already done. That was easy, right? I mean, that is a cool thing. But imagine being a student. Um, they actually have a hard time figuring something like this out, especially if they are not extremely used to raw construction, construction of geometric figurines. So first thing, remember, we are going to put it into here. It's longer than half of our side length. OK, perfect. This is the first one. We are going to fix it in place once again, our compass. Let's turn it around. And we are going to see if it's roughly a tangent. That's the best I can do. But don't you agree that this is a fun little exercise and that it's pretty educational, actually? I mean, that's a very cool thing that you can do here. And it's crazy, but it's actually pretty much a tangent, even though it was just pretty rough. I mean, I was using just garbage things. This is not something that you should use for construction, but you see it works out. And actually, when I do stuff like this at school, I go outside with my students with just basic tools such that they can measure stuff. And then I begin to let them construct just triangles out there in the sand in our schoolyard. And this is a cool exercise, which really lets them get a feel for the elementary geometry and the construction at hand. And there's actually one more way harder exercise, which I'm going to present in the next video, that is constructing a square using only straight edge and compass. There are actually several ways to do this. One is using construction like this. Maybe you can figure it out on your own using a circle and then create yourself a square. But yeah, that's also a fun exercise which I have in my exams in, in seventh grade. And I hope you did enjoy what you have seen today. And if you are interested in more geometry, elementary geometry, construction, and all this crazy stuff, then why not make sure to check out the content of today's sponsor brain? What kind of sponsor get in our video here on this channel? Now, that was a fun exercise, don't you agree? And there's so much knowledge and little things hiding behind those theorems like similarity and the stuff similarity when it comes to deriving this chord theorem for the circle and all of this cool stuff. Euclidean ge geometry in and of itself is actually pretty cool. I'm not the hugest fan of elementary geometry but some exercises just like this one are great to get started into the topic or to check if you actually got the knowledge to go further in into the topic. For example, um, other types of geometry like non-Euclidean geometry and the like. And brilliant can be your bridge to connecting the knowledge that you already have or that you want to brush up on to even greater topics going from elementary geometry to the more advanced stuff in a matter of days or weeks by using their interactive learning concept. Brian is an online learning platform and app with nearly 70 interactive courses in all topics STEM, be the mathematics that we did today, computer sciences, physics, chemistry, everything you can imagine in the STEM field. Brian definitely got something up their sleeve for you. 
And in my opinion, Brilliant is the best platform to learn something new in a matter of days or weeks. Like, I mean it, hard topics, some which are also higher advanced mathematics, can be understood fairly quickly using Brilliant as your source for online learning. And I have heard from a lot of people that during quarantine and all this stuff, during Rona Chan, Brilliant actually helped them to learn something that they couldn't learn at the moment at their university because they couldn't go there and couldn't find the motivation to look through all the lecture notes and stuff. And maybe you could be one of the people who could just learn something new while also attending school in your free time. Maybe you are a curious individual like I am. Maybe you want to learn something new on a daily basis. Then Brilliant is definitely the perfect fit for you. And the best way to understand what's behind Brilliant, the course concept and all the curiosities that they have up their sleeve is to just check it out for yourself. You can try out a big portion for free already by using the link at the top of the description, brain.org slash flamblemaths. But more importantly, if you actually make use of the link, get yourself a premium subscription, then you're going to get 20% of the set premium subscription, at least the first 20 people to make use of the link. So it's a great deal. They're adding new content on a regular basis and they already have so much content available, you're going to learn a lot of new stuff. So definitely make sure to check it out and support the channel this way. And this concludes today's video. And as mentioned before, the next video is also going to be elementary geometry. Just a few little things I want to cover here on this channel. And I think that's a great exercise. And I think this could make for a pretty cool post, <laughs> to be fair. Um, yeah, other than that, don't forget to check out Flemmy's Wood, my, um, my woodworking channel. And up until the next video, I wish you guys a favorable day. Ciao.